My beloved family, I want to welcome you to another edition of our Messages to the Bride of Christ. And this week, as we are discussing the topic of idolatry, this edition um, will be idolatry is a work of the flesh. And I pray that this will truly bless you. I want to welcome you on behalf of our pastors, Pastor David B. Hall, Pastor Mark Lewis from South Africa, Pastor Richard Cardo, and Pastor Richard Fornil, and also all our lovely admins um, that are working behind the scenes to bring this amazing content to you, and also on all of our Facebook pages as they're doing a lot of work. Family, the hour is very light. And I really pray that you will hear this message, not only with your ears, but with your spirit. And that you will hear the urgency from which I am bringing this with. Time is so short and it is not promised to any of us. We are not even promised tomorrow. Please search your hearts today as we are all supposed to search our hearts every day before our Father and with the help of His Holy Spirit and His Word. We need to do that as God requires us to be holy and to be a set-apart people as He is holy. But before we start, I just want to lay this at the Lord's feet. I pray that you will pray with me. Abba Father, our Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name. Lord, I come to you tonight with this message and I pray, our Father, that you would bless all the listeners who are listening. I pray that you will open their spiritual ears, that they can hear what it is that your Spirit is saying to the church. Father, I pray as we bow down at your throne of mercy and grace, Lord, that you will please forgive us our sin. Father, we repent of our sins, we repent of anything that makes you sad and it breaks your heart and we ask you to help us with our weaknesses and our mistakes, Father. Father, and I want to thank you that you sent your Son, Yeshua Mashiach, our Lord Jesus Christ, who died on that cross for us, who gave his life for us, Father. Lord Jesus, thank you. We will never have enough words to thank you for the price that you paid for us, my King. Lord, we bow before you. You are a holy God. And I ask, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh, search our hearts. Please lighten in us. If there is anything hidden in darkness, Lord, please show it to us so that we can repent, we can be made whole and restored. Father, we only want to do what is pleasing unto you and we want to follow in your ways, Yeshua, picking up our cross, dying to self and crucifying the flesh, being molded, being shaped, being formed into your image and your likeness every day. Please bless this message, Father. Please bless the words from my mouth. And let it not be me who speaks, but remove me and my flesh out of the way and let your Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh, speak through your servant. We worship you and we praise you and we thank you for this honor and this privilege, Lord, to speak your word. And I pray, Lord, that these words will minister to the hearts of your children and that they will hear in this hour what is on your heart. We glorify you. I ask all of this only in your name, King Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. My beloved family, Let us begin with the message and I pray that it will bless you. I pray that you will do 
self search in your heart and see if there is anything that is not pleasing to the lord idolatry is a work of the flesh idolatry is considered a work of the flesh in the word of god in the bible the works of the flesh are the things that humans naturally tend toward that are against god's design idolatry is the worship of something or someone as if they were god idols can also be misplaced priorities such as making entertainment a priority over other things beloved ones walking in the flesh versus walking in the spirit it's extremely dangerous practicing idolatry and walking in the flesh more so than people even realize most people aren't even aware that they are operating in the flesh and not in the spirit the fallen flesh nature was conceived as the nature of the beast when adam and eve fell for the enemy's lies in the garden of eden the seed of self and pride was then conceived the main reason satan fell was because of self and pride as natural fallen man the seed is in our blood in our nature and this seed of self and pride is being fed by our unsurrendered thoughts and emotions living a do as thou wilt's life basically living your best life now the world lovers phrase I want to read to you 1 Corinthians 10:14 and it says Therefore my dear friends flee from idolatry Colossians 3 verses 5 reads Put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature sexual immorality impurity lust evil desires and greed which is idolatry it's found in our earthly fleshly nature Jonah 2 verse 8 reads those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them Revelation 9:20 says The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands they did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold silver bronze stone and wood idols that cannot see hear or walk family even to the end times even after everything happened man will still not repent once you become a born again spirit being yahweh's name is also written in your dna so the spirit and the flesh will then be in a daily battle against one another and we have to thus crucify the flesh by dying to ourselves daily as we are in a fleshly body with a heart emotions mind thoughts will intellect and we have to surrender it all have to surrender the mind all as these two are in enmity with one another yeshua instructing us to pick up our cross crucify the flesh and follow him now 
the fruit and the signs of the Holy Spirit in your life is the following. And this is being referred to walking in the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love for God, for fellow man, and last on the list, for self. Joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. But the fruit or the signs of operating in the flesh is found in Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21, and they are sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, which is rebellion, slander, gossip, defamination, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Family, let me break this verse in the Bible open even more, and the meaning behind every word will truly blow your mind. You are welcome to make notes to pause and play as we go. Walking in the flesh, drunkenness is intoxication, inebriation, a state in which a person is overwhelmed or overpowered with spirituous liquids and drunk with passion in the mind. That's drunkenness. So it's not only because of liquors that have been drunk, but also drunkenness as, as due to the passions of the mind. Adultery, both physical and spiritual. Fornication, the unlawful indulgence of lust or adultery. Uncleanness, it's being foul with sin, not in a covenant with God. Lewdness means wicked, vile, profligate, pornography, licentious acts, the shameless, unlawful indulgence of lust, fornication or adultery. Idolatry, the worship of someone, of self or something other than God, as though it were God. Fetishism or the worship of trees, rivers, hills, stones, etc. Nature worship is the worship of the sun, the moon, the stars, and supposed and the supposed powers of nature. Euro worship, the worship of deceased ancestors, or of heroes like sports, actors, or people being put on pedestals even your own family. Sorcery, which is witchcraft, divination, speaking to spirits and the new age. Hatred, contentions, is a struggling together in opposition, strive. Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, which is uncontrolled anger outbursts. Selfish ambitions, Dissensions, which is discord, strife, conflict, contention, quarreling, antagonism, heresies, envy, murders of both, of person in the flesh, and by gossiping and slander, you kill a person's character and name. Rivalries means this word refers to a um, to drinking parties that extend um, late into the night, usually ending in sexual debauchery. 
Now Yeshua said that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The flesh is physical, family. It's the soul realm, the heart, the mind, the body, the soul. The flesh operates in worldly things. The flesh operates in self. The flesh is focused on physical, carnal things that can satisfy here and now. The flesh is ruled by the soul and thoughts and emotions. So do not be distracted by the things of this world. We are daily building one of two kingdoms through the thoughts and the actions which we choose to think the words we choose to speak, the things we choose to do and spend our time on. Which kingdom are we building and which altars are we bringing our sacrifices to? God's kingdom or the dark kingdom? We are living sacrifices to Yahweh. Does our sacrifices bring purity, holiness, obedience and righteousness? Do we sacrifice time to be alone with the Lord? Or do you please the God of this world, Satan, by allowing sin, disobedience, rebellion, carnality, fleshliness, self, pride, worldliness to reign over your soul. When you choose the darkness by walking in the flesh, yes, you choose the darkness, the kingdom of darkness when you walk in the flesh. You will never be content with what you have in the world and it will never be enough. You will never have lasting peace or joy in your life. Do we live and operate in God's house, the kingdom of the spirit, or in the kingdom of the flesh, self, the kingdom of darkness? It cannot be both. No man can serve two masters. God didn't call us to live a soulish life, ruled and guided by our minds our will and our emotions. He called us to walk with Him, to abide in Him, to fellowship with Him. And walking with Him means walking in His kingdom, His kingdom ways, His spirit, because He is spirit, and worshipping Him in spirit and in truth and by walking in the spirit we do this by obeying and loving God's kingdom principles family I pray that you will hear the words that I speak by the spirit of Yahweh and that they will minister to your heart and you will really take it to the Lord in prayer and to his word and ask him to speak to you too I pray that you will be blessed, you and your families, and that the angel of the Lord will encamp all of you as you fear him and you love and obey him. And I pray that the Lord will meet all of your needs above and beyond even that, that which you asked for, that he will provide for you. And I pray that you will be blessed um, until the next appointed time. Be blessed and have a lovely day or a lovely evening wherever you are. Thank you, family. Bye-bye.